morning, church. Good morning. Okay. I think we can do just a little bit better. I know we're not on here. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay. There we go. Was that Mark? Or was that? Oh, Russ. Yes, of course. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. And uh, I'm nothing if not predictable because nobody else will lead this song yet. And I keep telling them, anybody else that wants to, please go ahead. I will find other songs to lead. But this one, ever since I first heard it, just got to sing it. Let's make this your prayer as you sing it to him today. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but to live Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done. yours, all yours, all yours, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever, the kingdom is yours, it's yours, it's yours, yours. God's people said, amen. Amen. Yeah, give him the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're so glad you're here this morning. We're just, the Lord's going to do some special things today. Just believe it wholeheartedly. That song, that really does encapsulate what we are praying for. We are praying for in Cedar Rapids as it is in heaven. So, Lord, I would pray that you'd bless this day. I pray that you'd bless those who are here, bless those that are online watching today as well, God. And I would pray that we would leave this place different because we were in the presence of an almighty God. I pray whatever needs that folks have, Lord, I I pray you start meeting those needs, whether they're spoken out loud or not. But would you meet those needs? Would you touch your people? Would you visit with us today, Lord? It's in your name we pray today. Amen. Hey, turn to your neighbor. Tell them you're glad they're here.
Cheers. shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god sing it out almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Remain standing. Uh, there was a while back, I've shared this in our journey group, and if you've not been a part of journey groups, we need to start more, so more of you can be in them. 
I'm just going to put a plug in for him, but I know one thing I've been able to share there that God did for me a while back. You know, we all have our devotions and our routines that we go through in the morning or whenever it is you meet with God. And mine were there, but I admit they, they, they needed a kick in the... <laughs> you know what I mean. And one morning, I just felt like God was impressing me. Get on your knees. And I've been getting on my knees ever since to start my day. And uh, folks, there's something about that. Now, I would recommend a pillow if you're down there for a long time, <laughs> which, which I have my pillow. But uh, that's where the battles take place, don't they? That's where the battles transpire. That's where the victories are won on our knees in prayer. Let's continue to worship him. He's so wonderful. Think about that as we sing this next song.
praise they need a little time to change tracks <laughs> uh, I've been camped out in Isaiah for quite a while now and I've never been camped out this long in Isaiah and I keep going back and repeating chapters and you know there are incredible prophecies there warnings you know of doom and destruction but the prophecies of the coming Messiah and deliverance and one thing that I noticed there that happens time and time again and I was just flipping through it last night and it'd be hard to just find one passage because they're all so powerful but time and time again this holy God that we serve and worship reminds his people who he is he talks about idols and how people take a piece of wood <laughs> and they cook with part of it and they carve an idol and worship the idol out of the rest of it and he shows the absurdity of that and he reminds the people time and time again if you just go through the chapters of Isaiah he created all things. He is before all things. There is none that is above him. He is uncreated. He is everlasting from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. Let's continue to worship him.
I was thinking of a different song <laughs> that I've been listening a lot to this week. And the line says this, that he's not a, he's not a, ba a baby in a manger anymore. Nope. He's not a man that's broken on the cross. Right. He's alive, and he's right. coming back again. Amen. 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 So we, we, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you're not, you're not a broken man hanging on a cross, but you're someone that defeated death, hell, and the grave, Lord. Amen. I thank you that, that you're here, that you're coming, and you're coming again, Lord, Amen. as well. And I would pray that today, God, that you be glorified and that you make yourself known, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated, church. Amen. Hey, a few quick announcements that we got, and we got some, a special presentation here in just a minute. But, um, but we have our... The, we have a deadline today, so men, if you're going to the men's retreat that's this Friday and Saturday, okay, like we, you have to let me know today, okay? So if you let me know tomorrow, it's going to be too late, all right? So if you're going, let us know. Uh, there's registration forms out front or sign-up sheet at least. Church will get you registered, and, and uh, it's, it is going to be a really, really good time. We also have coming up. Uh, there's another, we're trying to put as many sign-up sheets out in the link as possible. So you want to know what's going on, start looking out there, all right, amongst all the other ways we communicate. But we are going to be doing a Thanksgiving dinner here on Thanksgiving Day at 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, we're going to do Thanksgiving dinner here. Um, we will provide the turkey, the meat, all right, but those that come, we'd ask you to just bring your favorite side, and if we have 10 different versions of stuffing, so be it. That's all right. April said last week, we'll gobble till we wobble, right? No, let me tell you what's, why, why, why we want to do this, is that there's many, there's, there's a couple reasons. One, there's probably many in the room that, that family lives all around the country, or family has went to be with the Lord. And rather than sitting at your home by yourself, we would want to provide 
a, an outlet for you to come and be with your church family on Thanksgiving Day, okay? So that's why we're doing it. And then others, it's just, man, you can't even afford to breathe right now. Things are so high. So rather than, rather than, rather than paying for a whole dinner, you can come and just bring a side and, and again, enjoy it with your church family. So we want to we wanna point that out and make sure that you come to that, all right? Am I missing anything? Okay. All right. I'm not on my sheet either. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we, we, we're going to take our tithes and offering right now, and then we'll do our, we're going to actually receive members this morning into the church. So we're excited for that as well. But again, there's four ways to give. There are four ways to give. You can drop it off in the box right there as soon as you enter in. Uh, you can give online at oaklandnaz.org. There's a text to give number that you can text to give and it'll prompt you through it or you can drop it in the mail. And I was told last week by mail carriers in the room, I can call it snail mail and no one gets offended. So, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you can give a litany of different ways. And so I just encourage you to give so into what the Lord's doing, so into what the Lord's doing and watch, watch what the Lord does in your own life. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We would pray that you would bless it, God. I pray that you would multiply it just like loaves and fish. May it stretch further than humanly possible for the giver and for the local church, God. We love you and we bless you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, yeah. So it is an exciting day in the life of the church, right? We have several people that went through membership class and have decided that they want to link arms with the church and become part of, whether you join or not, you're part of the church family, but they wanted to take it a step further. And, and, uh, and so I'm going to ask those that went through the class and, and, and have decided you're going to join the church, could you all come on up here just for a few minutes? Come on up. Amen. Yeah, we might as well come up on the platform. That's easier. Amen. This is exciting. It's a big deal. Yes. Amen. Well, this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to present them with their... You can come on up here, two tears, if you want. She says no. <laughs> That's all right. All right. We have several things. and we, we have several that have decided to join, and then we're receiving one by way of transferring as well. And, and Gary, Gary's up here. Gary's transferring in. But let me tell you what, what we did. When you go through membership, we go through the core beliefs of what the Church of Nazarene believes, right? And then we also go through what Oakland Church, what we're about, the unique, specific mission and vision for this congregation and then after we went through all that, they were each presented with a covenant. And, and I'm going to read the covenant, okay? And I'm going to read the covenant out loud. They've all already signed this, okay? And so if you go through membership in the future, you'll have to sign this to join. But they've signed this, and then I'll pass out to introduce them, and we'll go from there. But uh, this is the membership promise. Having received... Christ is my Savior and been baptized and being in agreement with Oakland Church and Nazarene's beliefs, vision, and purpose, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with the Oakland Church and Nazarene family. In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following. And this is what it says. I will protect the unity of my church, which is Romans 14, 19, by acting in love to, other, to others, by refusing to gossip, and by submitting to the leadership of the church. I will share in the responsibility of my church. That's 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 2 and Romans 15, 7. By praying for the church, by praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched, and by warmly receiving those who visit. Number three is I, res I will serve the ministry of my church. Ephesians 4, 13 and 1 Peter 4, 10. By seeking the infilling of the Holy Spirit, by discovering my gifts and talents, by, by being empowered to use my gifts, by developing a servant's heart. And number four, I'll support the testimony of my church, Hebrews 10.25, Philippians 1.27, 1 Corinthians 16.2, by attending faithfully, by living a godly or holy life, and by giving, uh, by giving regularly. And so, 
Having said this, would you all, you all have signed it, so you can't say you don't agree, but, <laughs> but would you all say yes to those things? Yes. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. All right. So we have several, several of them you know already, but, but we have Michelle Freeman, who's receiving it, going through. They are not in order. You didn't line up good at all. We have Nicole Cooper right here, <laughs> Loretta Curtis, Kayla Townsend, and we're very thankful for all of them. Amen. We have Kathy Rafferty. Kathy had joined years ago as a child but felt called to renew her commitment uh, in multiple ways, so we're very thankful for that. Amen. We have Penny Chris. We have Tim Chris. And then we have Gary Burkhart, who we're receiving by transferring. So I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over them, all right? But Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these precious souls. I thank you for these precious people. Um, I know some of them better than others, but we do, I do love them and care for them and pray for them regularly. I pray that this is just the beginning of something special and fruitful in their life. And so we receive them today into membership. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, brother. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to get into this. Mama, can you hand me my water? Amen. And I want to I want to thank your your notice and I'm I'm standing on something different today. And uh, Tom Darlin, I'd asked him to, to build this for me. And so and and and, and uh, because one I was tired of tripping over the worship team stuff. And uh, and I know every time I touch their stuff there's panic in the room. And or at least the musicians hearts uh, uh, come up their chest and so so anyway, so Tom built this, and, and it was really, uh, yeah, we're thankful for that. And he, he's probably mad, he'll probably be mad at me for even saying he did it in front of the church. But, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what he said, and, and I'll tell you what my wife had said, and, um, and, and the short of it is, is that we, we love old, repurposed things, things that should be discarded, that is bringing new life and use for new new purpose. And he came to me and said, Pastor, I'm going to use a bunch of stuff from a barn that was going to be burned down. And so instead of something that was going to be burned down and put in the trash and or, or, or what have you, it's now going to become a platform for the gospel. Yeah. And I just think that's 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 one that's very, very prophetic. And I just love I love that. So thank you. Amen. All right. Let's get into this. Revelation 22, I, I'm going to start in Revelation 22, and I'm going to land it in and spend all my time in Matthew 25. But Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 17, says this, that the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let, he, let the one who hears say come, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the water without cost. But the spirit and the bride say come. Come, come means to, 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 to arrive. Come means to, to happen to, like almost like an event, and it means to continue to come is the way this language means. And, and so here's... Here's this, one of the last verses in the Bible, and, and this is talking about the return of Christ. And the Word teaches, really, that what this is saying is this, is that when we begin to partner with the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit is saying, come Lord Jesus, but when the bride of Christ, which is us, begin to say, come as well, what happens? Others begin to hear it, and they say, come. 
Now, they may not know what they're saying come for, but there's passion and excitement and fervor in the body of Christ that's doing the same thing that the Holy Spirit's doing and saying, come, Lord Jesus, that others are like, I don't know why they're saying come, but I might as well say come too. And then, and then we can say, if you're thirsty, come and drink, and it's not going to cost. See, I, 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 my heart's been really stirred this week, and many of you, many of you watch, many of you watch the news a whole lot. I get it, but 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 if you've been watching the news, you've been seeing what's going on with Israel, <laughs> and we should be praying that the Lord would send protection and and, and just stop what's going on wholeheartedly. And I've had some, and, and while I get it, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just going to say what I've been thinking all week. I've had some say, well, the, the end is near, brother, and like, I, I get it. And I'm not going to get into all that, but I'm, I'm going to say this. That rather than saying we need to hide in a bunker and stock up on toilet paper like we did a few years ago. Come on, Come on right? I was guilty of that. It's on sale, April. Let's buy all we can. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and we're having church members show up at our house and eat TP. We got plenty, right? But rather than stocking up on stuff and hiding in a bunker, it is time for the bride of Christ, which is his church, which is us, for it to start to say, Come, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, we want you to come again, but would you would you also come in the midst? of what's going on right now, God. Don't stay away. Don't stay... Un He's not disinterested, but don't stay far away. Don't stay over there. Would you come and make yourself known in the midst of what's going on? Beloved, that is what we should be praying in this hour. And as we say come, it stirs up hunger. It stirs up hunger in our heart, and it stirs up hunger in those around us. Again, why y'all so, why y'all so joyful? Why y'all so happy? Why y'all have hope in the midst of this? Let me tell you why. Because again, that lyric I read a little bit ago. There, he, he, there's a man. Uh, there's a. He's fully God and he's fully man, and his name is Christ Jesus. He's not a baby in a manger, right? He's not hanging on a cross. He's not in the grave anymore he ascended to heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the father ever living to make intercession on our behalf right he has hair white as wool his eyes are like fire right he has a his feet are covered in burnished bronze and, and he has a golden sash across his waist and, and out of his mouth is a two edged sword that when he speaks that the sound of his voice sounds like many rushing waters that man Christ Jesus will come back And I tell you, I, I believe this, like, like he longs to be longed for. Yes. Amen. He longs to be longed for. And so as we wait on the Lord, there, how long are we going to wait? I don't know. It's been 2,000 years so far, right? But as we wait, there are things that we should do in preparation. So if you will, look at Matthew 25. Believer, the spit really will fly from here, man. Now I'm closer. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit gets loose, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the, 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 old, the old timers, what was it? The old timers used to say that, that uh, they want to be near the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> Maybe not that, but look at Matthew 25. This is an incredible passage. The kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. <laughs> For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flasks along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, They all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a shout. Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, or trimmed their wicks. And the foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered and said, There will not be enough for us and for you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding feast. And the door was shut. Later the other virgins came saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Be on alert for them, for you do not know the hour or the day. So, of course, this is a, and I'm like, I'm just going to say, this, this, this is an end times passage about his second coming. But I also believe that we can look at this through the lens of, of revival, and we can look at this through the lens of responding to God's voice. Because God is looking for men and women that respond when he speaks. Right? When the Lord speaks, it, like when God speaks, like I, I'll tell you, like those of us that have, I, I'll just be honest, those of us that have pets, when you speak to your pet, nothing drives me crazier than when you say, come here. It's like, our, our, I'll get in trouble for saying my dog has a lazy eye, but my dog with a lazy eye will look at me like I'm an idiot, and he just sits right there and I'm like, come here. And he just does that. Like nothing drives me crazier, right? When we speak, we expect them to respond. And in a similar manner, but much, much more holy than I'm describing, but in a similar manner, when the voice of the Lord speaks to his children, he desires them to respond to what he's speaking. All right? We could, I could use the cliche pastoral saying that, that delayed obedience is disobedience, right? Now, now let's look at this passage from the, from the context of, of Jewish weddings. All right, so a closer look at Jewish weddings. There you go. Now, obviously, and it's not real different from what we do today. Some of it's different, but it's not too terribly different, and you could probably see some of these mingled in with, with modern wedding traditions. But, but the very first thing would have been the engagement or, or would have been when, when the, the, the bridegroom purchased or paid a dowry, if you will, and covenant was established between the two parties, and then, that, then it set the tone for where that bride or that, that, that woman was going to become the bride of the bridegroom. And so, like, we, we do very, very similar type things today, right? When, 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 I, when I married her, I called her mom and dad and said, can I marry April? And then... <coughs> And then I said, well, I was poor as poor could be then. I was working at McDonald's, truthfully. <laughs> I was. <laughs> but I said, I'm going to do my best to take care of her and provide for her, and I'm going to love her and cherish her. Like I established covenant with my in-laws. And so with that being said, this is the first part. And this helps us understand what's happening in this story because they should not have been surprised that he showed up. Okay? So there's two types of people in this story, right? There, there's the, there's the, the, the wise or the prudent, and then there's the foolish that's in this story, all right? The foolish were the ones that that did not hoard any oil or did not do any preparation, which I, I believe, and we'll get to this in a second, I believe that the oil that's to be accumulated is a history with God. In other words, it's, 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 it's spending time with Him and, and developing a relationship with Him. It's, it's, it's getting to know His heart and His character and His nature, right? It's, it's not just saying, pray the prayer, Got baptized, got that certificate, got that membership certificate. When I get to those pearly gates, I'm going to present my paperwork. They're in order. I'm good. Right? And it won't be like the DMV where they're like, you go to the end of the line, you didn't remember everything. It won't be like that. Right? And so, so that's what's going on right here. Now, the foolish, the foolish knew the bridegroom king was coming back. It was not going to be a mystery. The foolish knew he was coming back, but they did not do any of the preparatory work for his return. 
They thought that the engagement was enough. Like, how many understand one day there's going to be a wedding beside a glassy sea that's mingled with fire? We're the bride of Christ. And the word foolish. I'm, I'm, I, I, it's one of the few times I can say this in church and not get in trouble. D- foolish means devi- uh, devoid of understanding, or quite literally, the word foolish means stupid. Now, this will end positively today, okay? <laughs> like, I can, it's like, where'd the wind in the room go? Everyone got real quiet. You know what foolish is? Foolish is, again, thinking I, I prayed that prayer to get to heaven. I'm okay. And, and never spending an hour in prayer. Never spend time opening up the Word. Never spend time serving or giving or, or, or doing any of those things that, that He asks us to do. Or never asking the Lord to purify our hearts and, and, and cleanse us from sin. Like, like, like fo- foolish, is like, foolish is this. And maybe, maybe no one in here has said this to me, but in the last 16 years I have sat by countless people across from my office and, and it never ceases to amaze me. There'll come a moment and I say, well, how's your heart? How are you? And they will immediately say, say this, well, my grandma went to church her whole life, or my parents went to church their whole life. And I'm like, I'm praise the Lord, hallelujah, that they did that. But do you know him? Come on. Like, do you know him? Like, do you know the sound of his voice? Does he speak to you? Does he lead you? Does he guide you? Does he direct you? Because one day we will stand before him, and it won't be enough to say, this is what my folks did, or this is what my wife did, or this is what my kids did. Like, we have to know him. John 17, 3, this is salvation, or this is eternal life, to know God. Brother, let's not talk about them. Let's talk about the wise ones. We will. <laughs> I just, I'd be remiss if we didn't ever give those warnings, okay? Right, now, it's not a guilt, shame, or condemnation thing because I think that when we start on that journey to know him, you'll start to discover who he is. You'll start to discover what he thinks about you. And I promise he thinks much higher about you than you probably do. Right, And then you start to be transformed into his likeness. Now, the second group of people, they were the wise ones. And we all know this. But the wise are the ones that hoard oil. The wise are the ones that develop a relationship with him. Yes. That develop a history with him. We have 20, over 20 years of marriage of history together and a year and a half of dating. Right? Something like that. won't say it would be inappropriate the wise are the ones that they do spend time with the Lord the wise are the ones that spend time in the word the wise are the ones that serve the wise, the wise are the ones that are generous the wise are the ones that get to know his heart and his character and his nature that's who the wise are folks and so like like we know but like again we we know he's here we know he's coming and we know he's going to come again. We understand all this. But the wise are the ones that go and shut that door and get to know his heart, right? And so I, I put this in my notes to like repeat verbatim. But those who experience revival are hoarders of oil. <laughs> Right in this season, I made the joke. In this season of summer, summer, and especially because of what's ramping up across the uh, across the seas that we've prayed for, but, but especially what's ramping up, people are starting to hoard things again. And I get it. Like go, you, go get what you need to get. Go get what you need to get. But he's coming back. He's coming back. Revelation 19 says the bride has made herself ready. He's coming back not for a bride that has a bunker full of stuff. He's coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish that looks just like him. Yes. Come on. Amen. (laughs) 
And so I felt like I should ask, like, where, where are the ones that worship? Where are the ones that adore him? Where are the ones that pray? And where are the ones that are, that are spending time in his word? Where are the ones that says, you're enough for me, and I'm going to go spend time with you? Or where are the ones that, like David, that said, all my fountains are found in you? Like, like I feel like that's what the Lord is asking in this hour. Revelation 3.18 says, I advise for you to go by gold to buy gold that's redeemed by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you might clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see he says I say go buy these things what like you can't just run down to to Walmart like southern Ohio we call it Walmarts <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. It may, maybe because there's one in every town, or Dollar General, there's one on every corner. But but he says, "I buy means to to purchase, to redeem, to 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 attribute value to something." And I'm, I'm going to say this: that anything worth anything is worth paying for. Amen. Let me say that again: anything worth anything is worth paying for. I read this um, article, and what, like, when people pay for things, they take better care of things. But if something's free, they'll they may not take quite as good of care of it. And while salvation is free, and it is, there is a cost. That cost is taking up your cross and following Him. I'll say this, that in this parable, there's these ten virgins, and they all had lamps. Lamps are free, but oil costs something. You're all given a measure of a lamp. You're all given a measure of light. But the oil that takes to burn that lamp, that costs something. That is spent, and again, this isn't a legalistic about putting time in. This, this I say, this isn't saying, "Well, I'd hit this and this and this." I'm right. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about wanting to spend time with Him, and it'll be inconvenient sometimes, right? Some days you'll wake up and you're like, "Oh, five more minutes, Jesus!" Right? <laughs> hit that snooze button. Right? <laughs> Ethan, when he went off to school, he he told us that the first day that his roommate, who's his best friend. <laughs> Who is his best friend? His roommate hit the snooze button six times. And Ethan said, I wanted to wring his neck. <laughs> right? Like, dude, either wake up or, or use one alarm, but not six, right? <laughs> I don't even know how I got there. But, but lamps are free, free, oil costs something, all right? So let's move forward. So there, then there's the betrothal or, or the, the, the preparation of the home, if you will. So, so they've, they, they've gotten engaged. And what happens is the bridegroom leaves. He leaves to prepare a home for his future bride. And while he's there preparing the home, he sends gifts to the bride to remind the bride of how much he loves and adores the bride. And all the while, he's preparing a place. It sounds like, it sounds like John 14, right? Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house, there's many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And you know, and you know the way where I am going. Like, 
So this, you could see. So, so in this passage in Matthew 25, that 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 they knew he was going to come back, and they knew that they needed to prepare the oil, right? Because there would eventually be a midnight cry where they had to take a journey to go where the the wedding was going to take place, and 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 so so for us today, like we we know again, we know that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and we know that right now he has sent the Holy Spirit, which is the gift of the Father by the way and so he sent the Holy Spirit occasionally he moves or he'll bless he'll do this that or the other to entice us or to woo us or to draw us unto him but one day again he's coming again and then and then as these as the midnight cry is released Matthew 25 7 says that those virgins rose and they trim their wicks or they trim their lamps so they responded to the cry at midnight, and again, the wedding started in the middle of the night. A cultural peculiarity, right? But, but, but they, the, the word trim means this. The virgins rose to trim, which means to beautify or to cleanse or to make holy. And so for us as a people, the Lord is looking for a bride that, again, that it's holy, that's living in consecration and devotion unto Him, right? And trim, trimmed also means to take the lamp and put it or put that wick in a burnable position. And the Lord is not looking for a bride that just thinks, Meh, I give my life to him. I think the Lord is looking for a bride that loves him with all of his heart, with all of his soul, with all their mind and all their strength, and they love their neighbors as they love themselves, right? He's looking for, I, I, like I say this phrase all the time, he's looking for a bride with fire in their eyes and love in their hearts. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm learning this. How, where's my, where am I allowed to stand? <laughs> And I'm going to get right up on over the edge. <laughs> See, this, this makes sense in context with that first verse that I quoted, Revelation twenty two seventeen. 17, right? The Spirit and the bride say, come. Because if we can begin to partner with the Holy Spirit and say, come, others will begin to hear that hunger in our hearts that desire in our hearts. But now, I'm not telling you to walk down, I'm not telling you to walk out here on 42nd Street and just start saying, come, come, come. You'd look weird, right? <laughs> I'm talking about living your life with just a hunger and a desire for him. And what happens is people start to see that you look different. People start to see that you talk different. People start to see that you respond differently. And they'll say, why is it that you are the way that you are? And you say, let me tell you why. If you're thirsty, come and drink. Because there's a, a, a John 7, 36, if anyone among you is thirsty, let them come and drink, right? Let them come and drink. And, and, and they will never thirst again. Like he desires, he desires us to want him. Amen. I'll say this, folks. It is, it's been the midnight hour for 2,000 years. But it is time. Because he is calling, and it's time for us to respond. Now, verse 8 said, the foolish, the foolish said to the prudent, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. <laughs> there will not be enough for us. And then the prudent answer, the wise answer, no, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. I'll say this, the foolish's lamps were going out for a reason. Let me. I'll, I'll say like I'll say it. What I felt like the Lord said to me this week: the foolish only care about how they shine. They don't care about what it takes to shine. Wow. I'll say it again: the foolish only care about how they shine, not what it takes to shine. And I, I say this. We can't depend on someone else's relationship. Right. 
not your spouse, not your pastor, not your parents or your grandparents, not your friends or your neighbor. The Lord wants all of us to know him. That's what matters. And then we come together and we celebrate him together. And then there's the wedding. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at the midnight hour, there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom, come and meet him. Now, they, they would have known that he was coming at midnight, but they, they were not ready. So, 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 so they, 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 again, they would have known. It wouldn't have been like, now they may not have known the day he was going to show up, but they would have known it was going to be, be the midnight hour. And weddings happen at midnight. Weddings here happened at, midnight, at the midnight hour. So they'd get the oil to make the journey from the bride's home to the new home where they would be joined together. Let me say that again. They would have to accumulate that oil so that when he showed up at midnight, they could make that journey from where they were to where he wanted them to be. And so it's like, beloved, what do we, what do, we do now? We spend time with him. We worship him. Why do we pray so much as a church? Why do we place so much value on it? Because I believe that if we can equip a group of people corporately to pray, then it's going to spill over and we're going to pray as individuals. Amen. I believe that if we can get a group of people coming in and they hear someone else pray out loud or, or they witness other people, they'd be like, man, this is not nearly as mysterious as I thought it is. So maybe, just maybe, I'm going to wake up 10 minutes earlier tomorrow morning and I'm going to go get alone with him and I'm going to spend time with him. Now I'm going to tell you, sometimes, sometimes you go in there and you shut that closet door or you go and you pray with the Lord and it feels like you're talking to an empty room. And I say, keep doing it anyway. I'll never ever forget this. We were we were we call it the big house, but we were living in the big we were living in Louisville, Kentucky, this big old house uh, in downtown Louisville, and the Lord the Lord convicted me about how I was reading the word, and I was I was reading plenty, I was praying plenty, but I felt like at that time of my life the Lord said, "I don't want you to open that up. I don't want you to open that up until you know that I'm in the room with you." Amen. And so I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and so I go and I I go, I go, and I'm not telling you to do this, this is just my own craziness, I guess, but I go and I put my Bible on my desk and I, I sit down on my chair, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know I have stuff to do, right? <laughs> and I waited and waited and waited, and then finally, and the next day I did the same thing, and I'm like, Lord, like, I'm, I've got stuff to do. I've got to take my kid to school. I've got to do all these things. And, and, and it was like two weeks of this. And then finally, I don't remember how many days. is 13, 14. It was like after two weeks, I finally come in and I open the door to my office. And as soon as I opened that door, I knew the Lord was in the room. But sometimes it just takes us showing up day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and day out. And Well, I didn't feel anything. It's okay. We don't live by feelings. We live by faith. I'm thankful for feelings when I feel them, right? <laughs> Jesus wept. He felt stuff. So, like, don't let anyone tell you you shouldn't feel anything, right? But we don't, we're not, we don't live by that. We live by faith. But I'm telling you, there's something to be said about showing up day in and day out. Well, I read and I don't understand. Again, you may not understand everything in your head, but I promise you, your heart is getting much, much more than you realize. In any given moment, something's going to come out because he writes his word on your heart. Right? We say this all the time. That's why like, you'll be going down the road thinking, I don't know what to do, and a scripture comes to mind. Or someone comes to you and says, I need advice. And you give advice, and you're like, man, I need to write that down because that's much better than I would have ever thought of. What is that? The Lord begins to write things on your heart, and he changes your character and your nature if we go get alone with him and build that life of cultivating oil, if you will. And, and again, I'm telling you, beloved, we cannot, we cannot afford to leave it up to someone 
someone else on our behalf. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is my own stuff, but like I'm like, if I can fix it, I'm going to fix it, right? And I'm not going to depend on someone else to get me into heaven. Now, now run with me with just one more minute. I'm going to read two passages. And we're going to land this thing, and then we're going to pray, and I believe the Lord's going to move this morning. I'm going to look ahead at Matthew, Matthew 7, 13. It says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and broad that leads to destruction. And there are many through who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and there are few who find it. All right. John 10, 9 says, I am the door and if anyone enters through me, he will be saved and he will go out and find pasture. All right. But I want to focus on this narrow gate for just one second. All right. So, so here's, here's these wise ones that, that they, they did what they could. They paid the price. They got that oil. They did what they needed. He shows up and then they have this Really, the lamp was a was a bowl with a wick or candle in it, and they would they would burn that thing, right? And and as they're walking down that trail, they're 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 walking, following the king, following their bridegroom, where they're going, where they're going, and they're walking like this. Maybe this is my imagination, but it is fun to think about. <laughs> How many of y'all don't have very steady hands? <laughs> I was I was up here yesterday with with with, with Rick Brecky and and I was climbing down the ladder and and he said oh the ladder's shaking he goes oh no it wasn't the ladder it's you <laughs> <laughs> so here they are carrying it now like if I'm gonna tell you right now if I've got a if I've got to carry a bowl of soup across the kitchen, it's some of it's going to end up on like it's going to end up on my shirt. Maybe this is fun for me, but that gate's narrow, which means it's not very wide to get through. Maybe just maybe as they're walking. It's that oil sloshing, they're lighting their way, it's sloshing around the place. And they get to that narrow gate and they're like, ah. Come on. pop right through. This is so good. I thought you ought to like my sound effects better than that. But. <laughs> there we go, that's better. You have no oil, you don't go through. I, I came here to be encouraged today. I, I, I get it. I hope you are. I hope we're challenged today. <laughs> I hope we're challenged today to say, you know what? The Lord is calling me. And what's going on in the world right now, there's, there's birth pangs. We're, we're, we're told about that stuff. And we can, say, we can use it as an excuse to be fearful or we can use it as an excuse to, 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 to even what Bob had mentioned. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit my knees a little bit more now. Amen. Right? No one else is in the house. Is that, like, I, and I'm going to tell you, if you go get alone with the Lord and, and you, you, you do this right here and there's no one around you, you're either plumb crazy or there really is something to it. Amen. And I actually believe there is something to it. How do I know if I'm ready? I, I, I feel like you know in your heart. Wesley used to teach that you can have an assurance of salvation. Bob, you want to come on up here and strum for me today? I didn't warn him. I feel, I feel like I could keep going, but then I feel like I need to quit going so folks can respond. Now, I'm not going to be heavy-handed. I'm not going to be any of that this morning. There's wise and there's foolish. There's, there's, there's nothing in between. Right? That's, that's Revelation. You're either hot or cold. Right? We, we know this stuff. But I feel like there's a simple invitation this morning. 
But I feel like the Lord is saying, look, I would desire that you would be one of the wise ones. Because we know that he desires that none shall perish and all shall inherit eternal life. And whenever you want to start strumming, feel free. I feel like the Lord's wanting to wake his people up. You know, wake up, wake up, oh sleeper, right? He's wanting to wake us up to the reality that that he's really real. He is really coming again. But in this time of living our life here on the earth, which is really, really short in comparison to what eternity will be, he would desire that we would be a people that get to know his heart. Or the language you've been using this morning, that you'd hoard oil. That you'd go get alone with him and you'd grab a hold of him and you would not let go. Be like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. Be like the woman with the issue of blood that I'm going to push through the crowd. I'm going to push through the busyness of my life and the crowdedness of my life and the schedule of my life and everything else, the muck and the marmot. I'm going to push through and if I can just get to your robe and touch that, that's good enough for me. See, we've done a disservice by teaching people that all it takes is for you to say, repeat a simple prayer. That prayer is important, but that's the beginning. Like if we'd have been married 20 years and March 15th, <laughs> on March 15th, by the way, before I got married, those that know history, my best friend said, beware the Ides of March. But two of you got it. The other use, other Evians need to read more. <laughs> but if I'd have said, I do, and she says, I do, and then we're like, See you later. That would have been pretty weird, right? Same thing often happens in a church setting that we say, I do, or I believe, come and save my heart. And then we never crack this open. We wait for your pastor to preach to you. Or you wait for your Sunday school teacher, or your uh, uh, the journey group teacher to present a passage to you. And, or, or, you, or the only time we pray is when we ask God to bless that meal to the nourishment of our bodies. And he's asking for us to get to know his heart and his character in the sour folks. So how do I accumulate oil? I do that. Okay, I really am done. So I'm going to give a simple call this morning. I'm just going to use the language of the text, okay? Now, I'm going to say this. If, however, when anyone ever responds, the people in the room should not be judging you for responding. And if they are, I'll take them out back, right? But if you haven't been living as wise, I'm going to invite you to just come and pray. It's that simple. You need help in the area of being wise. You need help in the area of spending time with Him. You need help in the area of being alone with the Lord and making Him a priority in your life. I'm going to ask you to just come on up here. I know it's quiet. I know it's not a hyped up sermon today. And I, I think that's actually pretty good because sometimes it is hard. Sometimes you have to pay a price. Sometimes you have to make that difficult first step. But if if you feel like I need help in that area, I'm going to invite you to come and pray right now. I'm going to wait just a moment while I minister and pray, okay? But if that's you, I want you to come. I'm done asking. If that's you, I just want you to come. I know we got stuff to do and I know we have plans but I, I really feel like this is I feel like the Lord is beckoning his church to move from this is how I appear to I I want you to change the inside of my heart Lord thank you preacher
here praying. I, I'd, I'd like them not to be praying alone. Can someone go put your hands on them praying, please? Wait, and, and those that attend regularly, you don't even have to be asked. You can just start surrounding people every week. So, Lord, I'd, I'd pray for all of us in the room that you would continue. Those that are at the altars, you can stay. You stay however long you need to. But I'd, I'd pray, Lord, that I pray this prayer every single day for this church. Lord, make us more hungry for you. May every person in this congregation that graces the doors, may they have a greater desire for you today than they did yesterday. Whatever that looks like, I can tell you, I pray for you, but I pray that more than anything else. So if you're like, I don't understand why I'm reading so much, or I don't understand why I'm praying all the time, or want to listen to worship, all, I'm, I'm sorry, it's my fault. No. <laughs> No, I, I pray that all the time. But I pray, Lord, that we're not like the ones that are foolish that think that it's just enough to show up. It's not just enough. You're calling us deeper and further into you than we've ever been. So I thank you, God, for those that are heeding the call. I see the tears around the room. I've seen the tears around the altar. I know, Lord, you're speaking to hearts. But I thank you, Jesus. I pray that no one leaves this today receiving guilt, shame, or condemnation. But I pray that when people leave today, that they see it as an invitation that the God of the universe is calling me deeper. So, Lord, we love you and we bless you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, church. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. You are dismissed, church. Amen. Amen.